Well, excellent job on chapter 14, module 14, title insurance. Now there's not a lot of information for our end of course review. And in fact, uh, if you just study what information is in this module, I think you'll be fine. I would not personally spend a lot of time re reviewing this chapter for the exam because I think most of the information is straightforward. You should be fine uh, with what's there and what to cover. I do want to talk about a couple of things just to remind you title insurance is an insurance policy uh, that will protect you against future things that could arise. For example, sometimes um, people forge a signature or perhaps sometimes there's someone else that needs to sign a deed. We had an example in my hometown where someone actually went to a closing and a lady posed as a wife of the seller uh, as though she was the husband, you know, the wife of the husband who was there, signed the deed. Uh, title was transferred and the title company had a lady show up in their office who said, that was not me who signed that property. It was my husband's girlfriend. Huge lawsuit um, happened over that. And of course, now, anytime we go for a closing, they look at the driver's license of both um, of everyone involved who's uh, transacting business. So those are the kind of things that can come up. And title insurance insures the buyer and more specifically, the lender for any kind of defects or problems that could arise. So uh, you have standard coverage, you have uh, your standard coverage, you have an, an extended coverage policy, as we talked about in the notes. And then I think we also had um, what you call the, uh, there, there's no coverage at all. So kind of look at that. There are certain things like your surveys not covered with uh, your title insurance, unless you request that. And the other important thing to remember about title insurance is if you purchase a property for, let's say, $300,000 and uh, you get a loan and let's say you pay off the bank and so you have this home, you own it, and uh, your title policy is for $300,000. That's what you originally took out. Now, let's just say you add a big room addition, you add a swimming pool, I mean, you're putting a lot of money into your house because property values in that area have really increased in value. And so now all of a sudden you have $600,000 invested of your own money in this property. And let's just say the title company made an error. Well, unfortunately, if you do not have some of the extended coverage or the additional riders for escalation of improvements and so forth, you, if there was a problem with that title and the title company said, hey, we made a mistake and we're going to have to pay you off, you're, you are only going to receive $300,000. So it's a good idea sometimes to increase the value of your title insurance policy just to cover issues like that. We had another example uh, in, in my office that we helped clarify and take care of, but it could have been a horrible situation. There was a, some folks who paid cash for a lot, a building lot in my hometown. I think they paid $20,000 for this lot at that particular time. So they paid cash for the lot, received title insurance for the lot, $20,000. They built a brand new home on this lot and paid cash for everything. Everything they, they did, paid the contractor cash, writing him checks, of course, but they're paying him monies. They're not, they never took a loan out. Well, the builder was robbing Peter to pay Paul. It finally caught up on him. Uh, unfortunately, he had to file bankruptcy. There were lumber yards that were not paid. They were filing mechanic liens on this property these people owned. And of course, their title insurance was only for $20,000, but they had many more problems than that. But I just wanted you to see how um, if, for example, you paid cash for a lot and then paid cash for all of your building expenses and the title company made an error and in fact, you really didn't have a clear title. You had what's now called a cloud on the title 
and uh, it was going to be a nightmare to get it cleared up. And without that, you couldn't sell it to, to anyone because if they go through a bank, the bank's going to want title insurance. And you can just see the nightmare that could, um, you know, that could ensue over some things like that. So the moral of the story is title insurance is very good. You need it. Secondly, if you make a lot of extra you know, repairs or you add a lot of money to your home or your real estate, you definitely want to make sure you have some type of policy that will, uh, your, your, will cover those or at least update your title policy from time to time. Very good for you to do. Um, I think I'm just going to take a quick look here. Uh, as you can see, the name of the insured, the legal description, there's some other basic items like that. You can find those in your notes right there. But again, I, I would not spend a lot of time studying this chapter. I think if you go through it once and then hit it again periodically, you're going to remember this information okay. And I don't think you'll see a lot of questions on the exam. And those questions you do see, I think you'll be just fine. So you have a, a short little review quiz once you finish that up. I'm going to meet you over in chapter 15. It's a big chapter, a big module on financing. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover. So great job. Keep up the good work. You are getting close to the end. So don't get discouraged. Hang in there.